The mountain of wood stacked on King George V playing fields is preparation for Portsmouth's giant bonfire that happens annually in Cosham. With plenty of organised events all around the Solent, people in Cosham shared what they're going to be up to. I will probably go to the nearest pub um, because they do like a firework display and I will take my children there and watch fireworks. That's what you do on bonfire night. We'll be going to the firework night that they do at Park Parade in Lee Park. I've never been there before, but they like have all the fireworks and they light a big fire at 8 o'clock or something, so we're going there. We'll do our usual trip over to St George's Playing Fields. We'll watch the, uh, the, the fireworks and bonfire fire supplied by Portsmouth City Council. We do it every year. We've done it for the past 15 years, so we'll, we'll do that again this year. We don't really have any plans for uh, for Guy Fawkes. We might go up onto the top of the hill and watch them, whatever there is from up there. Um, we did do that last year. I'm over from Canada visiting my parents. Uh, I was over at this time last year. Bonfire and Firework Night are names given to the celebration of catching Guy Fawkes involved in the plot to blow up the House of Lords with gunpowder in 1605. What do people remember? I don't, I vaguely remember the story behind the firework night, but not fully really, only from school. Um, but that's about it. Guy Fawkes, <laughs> legend. He broke into Parliament, probably the most honest person that's ever gone in there to blow it up. I don't actually believe that, but yeah, I'm going to have some fireworks, a sparkler, I'll have loads of fun, it's going to be awesome. For people that are planning their own parties and considering having a bonfire, the Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service are keen to stress the need for safety precautions. Be very, very careful about lighting the bonfire, so the use of accelerants um, and stuff like that. That, that can be a, a major hazard. You need a cordon around it, a safety cordon, so that people don't get too close. Um, alcohol, you know, so no drink. Somebody responsible for the bonfire. Make sure it's a safe distance away from any other combustibles, so fence lines, you know, properties, you know, other houses, anything else that can ignite. Wind direction is really important. Also, if you're going to have a bonfire, um, it's really, really important that you have means, i.e. a water supply, so buckets or ideally a hose pipe laid out, that in the event something falls off and there may be a potential fire spread, you've got almost a first aid action to, to douse down around it and to douse the flames. So, again, size is really important. You know, if you've got a small gun, it needs to be a small bonfire. You know, it depends on size of people's garden and how much area you've got around that. I mean, you wouldn't want to, you know, you wouldn't want it to go wrong. And, you know, and we've seen that. Celebrations attributed to Bonfire Night are no longer restricted to the 5th of November. And for animal lovers, it's the noise of the fireworks that are most concerning. I'm staying in to look after my dog because she trembles. She's got a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, but she's so frightened of the fireworks. She's been, well, been frightened since before Halloween. So, um, have the TV up really loud so that she doesn't... <laughs> Uh, so just to try and muffle the noise a bit, you know. So I think I'm probably going to be looking after my cat because it's petrified at bonfire um, and fireworks. So I'll probably get some sparklers and play with those. It seems to go on for weeks and weeks rather than there just being a one-off weekend or whatever. This is Shan Robbins for That's Solent.